Okay, welcome everybody. Hey, sorry about the uh, technical issues there. Uh, my name is Kelly Clement. I am your YouTube host for this evening here in the Metastock YouTube room. Uh, in a few minutes, we will have Jeff Gibby, Alex Tyler, uh, excuse me, Tyler Wood and Alex Cole with us uh, to present the Go No Go Go No Go chart strategies. So we're very excited for that. This is a brand new add-on for Metastock. And uh, from what I've seen, pretty awesome stuff. So I'm excited that you're here. And as you come into the room tonight, feel free to tell us who you are, where you're coming in from. Here we are here in beautiful Salt Lake City, uh, ready to start another webinar with you. And um, I'm just going to do some quick uh, checks, make sure everything's working okay, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, everything is looking pretty good on the technical side here. So uh, what I'd like to do is actually just introduce you to Metastock, who we are. We are actually technical analysis software uh, providers. We provide an amazing technical analysis software package. Um, you're about to learn some of that tonight in this webinar. Uh, if you're not familiar with Metastock, I would like to show you just a quick video about Metastock, who we are, what we do, and then I'll be right back with you. Hi there, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. As the marketing director, I get asked all the time, what is Metastock? How can I help my trades? Well, stick around for about three minutes and I'll tell you. Metastock is an award-winning software and data package that has been helping traders for over 35 years. Simply put, Metastock is a tool for traders like you to analyze the markets. Metastock helps you take the guesswork out of trading by offering a methodical, systematic approach to some key questions all traders come up against. Questions like, how do I decide which securities to trade when there are literally thousands to choose from? Which strategy should I use and how do I test that strategy before spending my first trading dollar? When should I enter and exit a trade? How can I effectively manage the securities I'm interested in? And of course, how do I know where prices will go next? At the core of Metastock are the power tools. The power tools give professional grade analysis tools to private traders like you and me. You can scan the market with the Metastock Explorer to filter and sort securities that show buy and sell signals based on your criteria. The Metastock System Tester lets you test most strategies through a process called backtesting which allows you to see how your strategy would have performed over time. You can easily manage and monitor the securities you are interested in with Quote Center. Quote Center lets you sort on a variety of criteria to view the data that's important to you. Then just double click on a security if you want to see its chart. With the Metastock Forecaster, you can even take advantage of patented technology to view probable future prices. If you're an options trader, you're going to love Metastock's OptionScope. OptionScope puts all the critical info at your fingertips, displaying sortable, customizable, color-coded options data, including the Greeks. And Metastock has solutions for traders of all levels and interests. If you're just getting into trading, you will appreciate the education offered by our many built-in systems. In addition to pointing out buy and sell signals, Metastock explains how they work in an easy-to-follow commentary window. Metastock has built-in systems based on popular strategies like MACD, Bollinger Bands, Turtle Trading, Candlesticks, and many more. Metastock even has the very popular and exclusive Rahul Mohindar Oscillator System, or simply known as the RMO. And as you become a more experienced trader, Metastock grows with you. Advanced analysts will enjoy the comprehensive list of trading systems and indicators and the ability to build their own systems. And if you're a day trader, you can't do better than Zenith, the real-time news, data, and analysis package offered by Refinitiv, a world leader in market data. 
Add on the world-class support, and it's not hard to see why Metastock has won the Stocks and Commodities Reader's Choice Award for 26 consecutive years. To find out more about Metastock and how it can help your trading, visit metastock.com or contact a product professional via phone, email, or chat. Awesome, everybody. So that is a quick introduction to Metastock, who we are, what we do. Uh, again, we are thrilled tonight to have uh, Tyler Wood and Alex Cole with us from Go No Go Charts. So I was just looking over in the uh, GoToWebinar room, and they are all set and ready to go. So here in about a minute and a half, we will get started. Now, if you are watching this recorded later, you can always just skip forward. Unfortunately, if you're watching live right now, uh, we do have a minute and a half to go. Uh, but uh, we are excited to have uh, both of these presenters here with us. Uh, we, ha we have had them speak once before and the presentation was uh, awesome. So we're expecting that again tonight. And again, as you come into the room tonight, feel free to tell us uh, who you are, where you're coming in from. Uh, I do see uh, that we're starting to get quite a few viewers coming in. So happy to have you here again. Again, my name is Kelly with Metastock. In a moment, we'll have Jeff Gibby, uh, who is our go-to webinar host and main uh, Metastock uh, host, uh, ready to present with us. So be back with you in just a moment. All right. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Thanks for coming. My name is uh, Chef Gibby. I'm going to be kicking off uh, today's uh, festivities with a little bit of a legal disclaimer. Thank you for coming. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying um, having a good start to the trading year. And uh, let's go ahead and read a legal disclaimer as promised. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the uh, any trade, the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So uh, I want to say, Thank you again for coming. I hope you are doing well. Uh, uh, today we have uh, Alex Cole and Tyler Wood joining us. Uh, these guys are great. We did a little bit of a preview. They actually did a bit of a demo session of the new Go No Go charts add on to us a little bit, actually just this morning, 8 a.m. Uh, and it was fantastic. Uh, I'm very, very excited for you guys to be able to see what they've been working on over at Go No Go Charts. Really excited to get this into Metastock and uh, to be able to show it to you. Uh, we've been working on it for several months now. So Tyler, Alex, how are you guys doing? Fantastic, Jeff. Thanks for having us on tonight. No yeah, problem at all. Now, let me go ahead and uh, let's see. Um, Tyler, you're the one that we need to send the presentation to, right? Yeah, if that works for you. Okay. I've got a few slides yeah, there to we share go. with everybody. 
Perfect. All right. Should have just popped up and said, hey, are you ready to share your screen? And I'll let you know when we can see it. Okay, and we can see it. Perfect. Fantastic. So, what could go wrong? What could go anyway. wrong? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little bit of a joke. We have some technical issues, but we we seem to have everything sorted for now. Uh, your turn, guys. So go ahead and go, and uh, I'll be right here if you need me. Fantastic. Yeah, Thanks, thank Jeff. you, Kelly. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and really, the whole team at Metastock for all of the work uh, that has gone into building these tools into Metastock. Uh, and so for everybody on the line tonight, Alex and I are going to talk to you a little bit about what institutional money managers have taught us over our careers in, in uh, finance, uh, and then show you some of the tools that Alex has developed over years and years, sitting at the uh, right hand of institutional traders, analysts, portfolio managers, uh, and others. So Alex, you doing well tonight? Very well. Yeah, it's a little chilly here, but not as cold as where you are, I don't think. But uh, <laughs> let's get going. Tis the season, tis the season. All right, so we're gonna talk about trend following. Pretty familiar topic for most everybody on the line and certainly every technician uh, has heard the phrase, the trend is your friend. But what we're talking about today is how you remove emotions from trading. Uh, this gentleman, John Henry, uh, who you all might be familiar with, says that if you take emotion, the would be, could be, should be, out of your equation and look at what is and then find a way to quantify it, you have a big advantage over the rest of the human uh, human beings. Uh, and that's really what we're doing. We're trading against other human beings. So you might know John Henry from a book or a movie called Moneyball. Uh, he owns a big portion of the Boston Red Sox as well as the Liverpool Football Club. Uh, but he got started as a soybean trader. So uh, if you think about trading in futures markets, uh, this is a gentleman who uh, actually grew up on the farm, uh, had exposure you know, with his family's uh, business, looking at, at uh, grain trades, and then understood that uh, markets trend. Prices are not entirely random, and then found ways to quantify that, and then got into uh, commodities trading. Um, and that's what we're going to try to do tonight with Go No Go Charts, is remove all of these things that introduce more human error, more of the cognitive biases and the emotional parts that, that make trading and investing so difficult. Uh, stick with me for a couple more slides. We're just going to set the table here. Um, you're probably all familiar with the expectancy formula. And why don't you go ahead and raise your hand. Don't worry, it's a webinar. We can't see you. Uh, if you've ever had such a high conviction swing trade or you know what was going to be a short-term trade, uh, and it worked against you. It didn't work out. You were wrong. But that trade quickly became an investment and you traded it down four, five, six, ten, twenty percent, uh, hopefully not. Uh, but that loss became an investment because you just did not want uh, to let go of this idea, this high conviction trade you had. And for whatever reasons, maybe you had a, a fundamental thesis or maybe there was something else uh, that it, you know you knew about this company, if you're talking equities, that made it such a great trade, you just couldn't get out of it, even when all signs pointed to, uh, to uh, it not working out. And that's the fact that behavior limits our ability to do this very simple thing, just to let our profits run and cut our losses short. Right, uh, it's more painful to lock in a loss. Uh, cognitive psychologists like Amos Tversky and Daniel Kahneman have shown this in their work since the 1970s. We're hardwired with a lot of things that they call heuristics, these mental shortcuts. And one of them is that uh, we have a real aversion to loss. We're also really eager to lock in a profit, which means when you do have a winning trade, you might capture that first bit of the trend, but you don't stick with it. We're not patient enough because we, we certainly want to lock in, to recognize when we were right. That's part of our behavioral hardwiring, and it makes those little trades that could have been just small losses turn into investments, and we hold them way longer than we should. Uh, and of the four outcomes, right, a big win, which we all would love, a small win, which is great, a small loss, no problem, we can handle that, or a big loss. What we're really trying to do is avoid those big losses. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit in, in mathematical terms about how this is simple, but not easy. And I wanna show you this expectancy formula. Right here we have what would be break-even trading strategies, right? Uh, where is my laser pointer? Here we go. Everything along this curve will break even. And that could be that you have a really high win-loss ratio. You have a real edge in picking winning trades. 
Uh, most institutional professionals know that uh, any strategy is going to work maybe 60 to 65 percent of the time if they've got something really, really solid. Um, and so they're they're looking at things out here. But you could still break even with <laughs> with the uh, wrong trades or losing trades four out of five. If only 20 percent of your ideas worked out, but your wins outpaced your losses four to one, you would still break even. And so what we want to be doing is finding profitable trading systems that are going to have a higher win-loss ratio, but also where we can maximize the gains of our winners and minimize the size of our losses. That's, that's the whole game of trend following. That's what the turtle traders were taught by Richard Dennis. Uh, and we're going to get to a lot of the tools that they use for this. Um, but before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about some of the mentors that Alex and I have had in our lives that really helped us understand how institutional investors uh, put money to work. Uh, David Keller, whom both of us have known for, for well over a decade, when he became managing director of uh, research at Fidelity Investments, he was also learning to fly a plane. And he said there were so many parallels between learning to fly and managing money that uh, he, he features this in a lot of his presentations. He says, the importance of routine if you're going to fly a plane, right? There's there's real risk if you're 10,000 feet above uh, above uh, the ground and you're in a little tin can. You have to have a routine in place so that when the engine cuts out, and that's part of the exercise, the instructor will get you up there and then just cut the engine, and you need to go down your checklist because at that moment when the nose of the plane lurches forward, it does induce panic. It's a panic-inducing moment. And for everybody who had a lot of capital at work in uh, late February of uh, 2020, you probably felt that precipice that was coming before the, the COVID crash. And what we don't want to do is rely on our lizard brain or our instincts uh, because we become emotional about those losses. Instead, we want to go through a very disciplined routine. As Dave points out with flying a plane, it could be something as simple as, you know, your knee kicked the uh, the fuel, uh, your fuel mixture was too rich because your knee kicked uh, uh, one of the instrument panels. You want to check all of those things, not become emotional. And the same applies to trading. And as a technical analyst, you might look at trend lines and moving averages, support and resistance areas. You might measure volatility. You might use things like moving averages. You might look at momentum and have some oscillators. All of those pieces that go into your technical checklist that tell you whether the trend is still in place, those are great. We're not saying that that's a, a bad process, but you can end up with a very complicated chart. Uh, and Alex, I know you worked with a number of sell-side analysts at, uh, at Bloomberg who had a really well-defined process. Uh, but what, what was the problem with having a chart like this? Yeah, I mean, we, we see this in all different areas of technical analysis uh, from the from the new uh, person trying to study technical analysis and overwhelming themselves with too much information to people that, like Tyler just said, do have a good process. And I would work with people on the sell side that would build a chart that uh, by the time they came down through their, their process had a pretty so sound recommendation that they wanted to give to the buy side. But the problem they were then finding was that it was very difficult to explain to the buy side because the chart was very, very complicated. So it can be complicating the chart can be an issue for so many different reasons and different people in the industry. And uh, when I first got started at the CFT Association, uh, Ralph Akampura came in to talk to all the, the new folks. And he told a story about uh, just joining a new asset management firm as their chief market strategist. And they sort of walked him around the trading floor. He was glad handing some folks and uh, came across a young guy who had six vertical monitors, each monitor with a hundred different panels and lines going every which way. And Ralph leaned over and asked the young trader, he said, wow, I've never seen technical analysis like that. What are you looking for? And the kid looked up at him and he said, don't tell my manager, but I actually have no idea what all these indicators mean. He just thinks I'm a genius and thinks I'm really busy. So I keep all these charts up that, with all these extra lines. So it could be that we're overcomplicating things for unnecessary reasons, but even the most uh, refined technical analysts, sell-side research professionals, they might have an over-complex process for measuring, identifying trends, and you get these uh, oftentimes contradictory indicators on your chart, but most importantly, it obscures that top most important line, which is the price panel. We need to keep our focus on price. And so Alex is gonna to talk to us a little bit about how those institutional professionals 
look at trend and some of the tools that they use and, and some of the things that are even blended into go no go charts so alex why don't we talk a little bit about trend identification yeah i mean at the end of the day there is no arguing really that trend identification is supremely important in our world um, and and you can if you can find the trend and then trade the trend and stay on the right side of the trend um, that's where you will be most successful um, you you really don't want to fight the trend I think uh, Tyler might have mentioned at the beginning the, the trend is your friend there's so many uh, so many sayings even people even talk about Newton's laws in terms of how important it is to to stay on the right side of the trend um, and like uh, we've we've mentioned it's not necessarily complicated but it's mm -hmm. not easy it's not easy to have the discipline to follow the process and stick with the trend uh, but if we can do it, then we can profit on the majority of the of the move. And so what we're going to do now is just really quickly show you how a, a technical analyst might build a process that helps identify trend. Now, the, the first way you do it before you even talk about an indicator is you would want to visually identify a series of higher highs and higher lows. So that's the first first step. And if you can see that price is moving in a discernible direction, maybe from bottom left to top right, OK, we're starting to identify a trend but we want to be able to do that systematically and so um, one of the things we might start with is something like the Donchian channels and we mentioned the turtle traders at the outset of this and if you're familiar with that an amazing experiment conducted by Richard Dennis uh, reads like a movie where he wanted to prove that he could teach people to trade he could grow traders like they grew turtles that he'd seen in a turtle farm on some of his travels and a very, very famous uh, true story where he created some of the, the best money managers that are still around today that still grace the CMT symposiums and still come and lecture to people and have you know billions under management. Donchian channels was their main criteria for entering trades. And the Donchian channels just simply look for, look at, take a look back period and ask the question whether or not price has made a new high or a new low uh, relative to its look back period. So typically the Donchian channels will be looking at a 20 period high or low. And if price moves higher than the high of that period, then the line will move up with it. So you'll see the red line moving up as price makes new highs and the green line moving up to signify that that's the highest low of the period. Um, so that helps us build in a, a bit of an automatic process of identifying trend. After that, we might throw on something like Bollinger Bands to try to determine whether or not price is trading within a you know two standard deviations of its mean and if those bands are shrinking and we see a breakout will we trade in that direction um so uh, bollinger bands very very well used in the industry of course moving averages um we we used to joke at bloomberg that moving averages didn't count as technical analysis when we tried to identify power users of the bloomberg terminal in terms of technical analysis we just sort of forgot moving averages because everybody had a moving average on the chart and we would say we would talk to people who said uh we, we you know we would meet people that said yeah i don't look at technical analysis and i noticed that there was a moving average on the chart you know <laughs> probably the the most uh, basic use of technical analysis but we will always want to have a moving average on there or two or three to see where price is relative to the average of its historical prices a price being above an average is inherently bullish prices are trading higher than they have been after you've got a moving average on your chart, you might then look to something like volume. Um, since the days of Charles Dow, volume as a confirmatory indicator uh, has always been used uh, to great effect by technicians. So if we were looking at trying to identify a breakout in a new trend, does volume confirm? Are we seeing high volume on a move higher in price? So we'll throw volume on a chart. And then, of course, we're going to put something on on the bottom that gives us a sense of momentum moving average convergence divergence the macd one of the most popular uh, again will give us a sense of how much enthusiasm or how much buying is happening during a trend and we can go on and we can go on uh, yeah. but what you what you want to sort of realize is that this is a sensible process and by the time we see a new high being made in price towards the left of this chart we see price breaking above its moving average. We see relatively high volume. We see the MACD crossing its signal line and moving above the zero line. We have all of these conditions being met on the bottom left of this chart. And as a technician, we might be now saying, okay, we feel fairly confident that a new trend is being identified 
um, and, and we expect that prices may well trend higher based on this confluence of events that we've seen by working through our checklist. But perhaps already you can start to see that this is becoming quite a busy chart. Um, and the, this is a very, very simple example of what somebody might do. We usually deal with, with uh, clients that have multiple panels on the bottom, two or three panels. We deal with people that have much more on their price, price panel and to the point that it becomes hard to uh, do traditional technical analysis where we might want to look at levels of supply and demand. We might want to look at breakouts above resistance. We might want to look at pattern analysis. Tyler, you and I are both uh, huge fans of the work, work of Edwards and McGee, you know, back the seminal work back in the early 40s. Uh, talking about pattern recognition, and it becomes difficult to do that if you've crowded your chart. And that's the that's the central theme that I want everybody to take away from tonight is that uh, we want to try to remove, remove the analysis paralysis, the the clutter that happens on charts, even with a very well defined technical process. These are all valid tools. Uh, but you want to simplify what you are looking at on screen so that there isn't any contradictory, so that there's no reason to doubt whether or not you should make that trade decision. Because trading, while perhaps simple, the concept of letting winners run and cutting losses short, it may be simple, but it is not easy. So here is your solution. The go no go trend from go no go charts. Simple, combines way more information than we were just looking at on the other uh, on that other more complicated chart into a complete composite of trend conditions. And all we're doing is color coding the bars on that price chart that, to let you know whether a trend is bullish in both a strong or weak form or bearish in a strong or weak form. And that, it, that keeps your eye focused on important price levels, the ability to do other uh, classical technical studies to mark up your chart and annotate as you like while keeping all of that rich information, all of the heavy computation that goes on behind the scenes with all of those technical indicators. So we want to we want to help you keep your focus on price, eliminate that analysis paralysis. And so just a quick review, the light aqua uh, to dark blue bars, those are going to be our bullish or our go trend conditions. These here, the, the light pink and the dark purple, those are no go or bearish conditions. Right in the middle, you see these amber bars oftentimes taking place at a, at a moment of trend reversal or change. Uh, both Alex and I are uh, students of the markets, and we've, we've read and loved Jesse Livermore. Uh, and he has a saying that there's a time to go long and a time to go short, and then there's a time to go fishing. And so these are our go fish bars. Uh, just to keep everybody focused on markets that are trending, securities that are going to give you the highest probability of return. Let's... Uh, Let's pause right there and just say that uh, as a thank you for everybody coming to the webinar tonight, uh, we wanted to give away that tool for free. So it's right on Metastock. Uh, and in fact, because you registered for the uh, for the webinar tonight, uh, the good the good team over at Metastock is going to enable that for you uh, as a as a template to build into your Metastock charts, just so you can play around with it and you can look at all of that complex trend identification information that blend of statistically tested indicators all in a single color-coded price panel to keep things simple for you. All right, let's move right on. We know that price is paramount. Uh, and Mark Abraham, another uh, well-regarded uh, investor, says that ultimately it's the dollar-weighted collective opinion of all market participants that determines whether a stock goes up or down. And that consensus is revealed by analyzing price. It's only price that pays. That's why it's so important to focus your attention on what price action is doing. All of the narrative and the storytelling, right? Uh, bad stats from the jobs report means good things for the stock market because that'll slow the Fed's uh, hawkish stance on raising rates. All of that nonsense that we are blasted with every day, all day long on financial news media, on Twitter, from our neighbors, you name it. Um, it really doesn't matter. Right? We want to have an objective, disciplined, evidence-based approach. We're not trying to forecast what will happen. We want to react in a responsible way to what the market is telling us. And that's what Go-No-Go charts are all about. Uh, so to just stick with this thread for a second, just looking at uh, the Go-No-Go -Go trend indicator, we want you to, to do a couple of examples with us. Just look at the chart 
uh, and let us know what you're seeing. Blue is the strong bullish conditions. Aqua is a weak bullish condition. We talked about those go fish bars at uh, moments of neutrality. And then pink is the weak bearish signal, purple being the, uh, the strong bearish condition. So if we were to look at a chart of, let's say a daily chart of Apple, right there on the top right corner, you can all see trend conditions tell us that this might be a buy the dip moment. The trend conditions have not changed. We are still moving upward and to the right, even though it has pulled back, consolidated. And so we have a weak go trend on Apple. Uh, go no go charts were designed to help investors understand the direction and the continuity of those price trends, right? The, the danger of multiple technical indicators is that you could always find some evidence to support your thesis, right? If you, if you wanted to get out of Apple and you had nine different indicators on your, uh, on your price panel, uh, there'd be at least one telling you that it was uh, risky at this moment. But for trend following investors, the, the way that they get to those uh, largely outsized gains is by being patient, by sticking with something that continues to trend. Um, and so we're going to talk about some of the uh, some of the other examples. But first, I want to get into a little multiple time frame analysis and take you back to uh, technical analysis 101 when we we all read uh, the work of Charles Dow 130 years ago, and he talked about three time frames of the market. That primary trend is inviolable. It's not swayed by financial news uh, or, or really driven by anything except the macro economy. And that's a very persistent, long-term, multi-year trend. Uh, he was a nautical man, a sailor. And so he talked about the primary trend being like the tides of the ocean. They're not easily swayed. But you have a secondary trend that goes along with that. And uh, as a nautical person, he talked about that being the waves along the ocean. Um, that is a reaction to the underlying fundamentals or the macroeconomic data that's coming out. This has a little bit more to do with investor mood. And then, of course, there's the third time frame, that shorter term uh, minor trend, shows the daily fluctuations or even hourly or minute charts will show you those uh, short term uh, fluctuations. He talked about the ripples on the surface of the water. Now, for go no go charts and any technical indicator worth its salt, it has to work the same across any time frame and across all asset classes. So let's do a couple more examples together, just using that go no go trend. All right, here's the same Apple chart on a weekly basis. Not only is the trend still a go, but all of those uh, daily bars that composed the uh, consolidation in our prior chart, where those were aqua. We've actually sustained the strong go conditions on a weekly basis for Apple uh, for quite some time throughout all of uh, all of most of 2021, uh, beginning in March and into this year. So you can remove some of the noise, some of the chop by zooming out to a larger term uh, perspective. You can also drill in. So here's the 60 minute or the hourly chart for Apple, and we're just resuming a weak go trend. So the responsible institutional investor is going to think about what the bias of the market is on that primary trend, that long-term weekly chart. Uh, we're still in a strong go. It's been trending for quite some time. And so you might want to trade around that position with a bias towards the long side, meaning you want to buy in early on an hourly chart uh, when, as soon as it's uh, signaling that new go. Now, this is the simplest way that we could use go, no go trend as an indicator. It's just a, a simple trend condition composite, and we want to stick with those that are in trend and, and get out of trades uh, that switch to a neutral or a no go. But it also works across all asset classes. And Alex, I know you've done a, a lot of work around uh, Marcos Katsanos and, and some of the folks that quantified intermarket analysis. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about how go, no go charts can compare across all asset classes. And before, before Marcus, John Murphy, the, uh, the Bible of technical analysis used to be on every, every desk of a technician <laughs> that I would go visit. Um, and there was a lot of work done in intermarket analysis by John Murphy as well, and, and others, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But the idea is, is that you can get a sense of trend across all asset classes, and then you can allocate accordingly if you have uh, the ability to do that, whether you're a fund manager or individual investor. And now with ETFs, of course, all of this becomes more and more uh, accessible for everybody. So you can, you know, create a view in Metastock or, you know, wherever where you can get a quick look around the asset classes to see what uh, the fundamental drivers are, what kind of impact they're having on 
on all the asset classes and if things are playing out the way you'd expect. So just something simple like this, using the go no go trend, you can see that equities are currently in a weak go trend, having flirted with that go fish bar of neutrality last week. Uh, treasuries are in a no go. Uh, oil has resumed a strong go, and there's a lot of argue, a lot of sort of story around why the commodities in, as a whole are, are a sort of long term play. Bitcoin, we've seen crash from over sixty thousand down to. Uh, down to where we are now, we've, we've rallied a little bit the last couple of sessions back up to about 43,000, but you can see that that no-go has been in place since around 60. Um, so the Bitcoin trend is a no-go. Gold, uh, for what it's worth, gold has not acted very very nicely for people. You know, it's been a bit of a mess, uh, but it is a weak go at the moment. And the US dollar has rolled over from being quite a solid go for several months, has now gone through some amber go fish bars and rolled over into a no go. So how does that intermarket analysis, uh, you know, how your research or your studies in intermarket analysis, you can see that very quickly just by using a trend indicator like this across asset classes. And Alex and I do a lot of work for our institutional clients. Each week we produce research, uh, both custom and, uh, and generally accessible research where we take a top down technical perspective. So instead of thinking about uh, just your trading plan uh, right off the get, uh, you wanna look at what the market context is telling you. So in a rising rate environment, what we're seeing uh, in terms of equities or commodities, what's outperforming, obviously that resurgence in oil and the, the fact that uh, yields are, are booming on uh, government treasuries tell us that uh, this is gonna be a different environment for stocks and we're, we're starting to see that rotation between the sectors uh, sort of resume again here in early 2022 uh, that we saw in March of last year and again in the fall. So uh, go to go research. If you know, you've got your hands on the free go to go trend indicator, but you wanna uh, learn a little bit more about how we put this together, what we look at from an intermarket perspective, uh, where we uh, wh where we try to fish where the fish are, so to speak, uh, and put ourselves in the highest probability of success for the asset class and the sector groups uh, that are outperforming. Uh, go ahead and give that a, a, a trial. Uh, it's available to all Metastock users uh, at gonogocharts.com. It's $1.99 a week uh, for research, and we wanted to make that uh, as accessible as possible, just so you can start to understand how the tools work, how we uh, how we have implemented this in a uh, responsible investment process. Um, so those two pieces come out uh, every Saturday. We look at a, a chart pack, a global overview uh, across all asset classes. And then on Monday morning, the long form newsletter uh, that we call Flight Path uh, to sort of look at the trends uh, that are that are stacking up with the highest probability for the week ahead. All right. Congratulations, everybody. You made it through the first half of the presentation. We've set the table. We're talking about trend following. We're talking about responsible top-down technical analysis. And we're talking about eliminating the analysis paralysis. In the second half of this presentation, we really wanna look at some uh, real-time examples, but also show you the complete suite of GoNoGo -No -Go charts that's available now on Metastock, thanks to the, uh, the hard work of William Golson and Jeff Gibby and, and Kelly and the whole team. Uh, so. Let's, let's buckle up and let's look at some charts. Uh, the complete solution, right, from GoNoGo -Go charts includes four main indicators, all built around this concept of eliminating analysis paralysis. Now we've just talked about the GoNoGo -Go trend, blending all of those technical indicators, that, that whole routine checklist process for understanding, identifying trends, and participating in the, the meat of the move. But now we're gonna talk about uh, the next piece, which is the GoNoGo -Go oscillator, and then we're gonna move on to the icons and gonna go squeeze a volatility indicator uh, that Alex developed. So first and foremost, Alex, Dr. Alex, Professor Cole, talk to yeah. us about momentum. How do you define yeah. it? We'll, we'll roll through these couple of slides. I'm sure everybody's familiar with, with what we're gonna talk about, but whenever I teach technical analysis um, to try to relate the concept of momentum, I'm British and I grew up with uh, Formula One and, and rally racing. And obviously these are not British or European style race cars on the slide. This is Sorry, Tyler's. Right. <laughs> but I always used Very to like correct. to talk about um, acceleration as and using cars as an example. So basically, when we talk about momentum, we want to measure the rate of change of price. We want to understand if price velocity has moved really too quickly in any direction. And that helps us understand the strength of a move in price. Uh, and if we're thinking about it in terms of the cars here, um, what we talk about is if you have uh, a car 
accelerating to get onto a highway, let's say. You're, you'll start off from a standstill, you'll hit 10 miles an hour, you maybe hit 20, 30, 40, increasing at that rate 10 miles an hour. But as you get closer to highway speed and you need to merge onto the highway, you'll probably, your acceleration will slow down. You'll go from 40 to 45 and then 45 to 48, 48 maybe to 50. So you're not increasing your speed at the same rate. And that's how I, I try to relate momentum to people when, when we have, uh, you know, when we do educational webinars. And what will likely happen as that rate of acceleration tops out, what's the most likely scenario in terms of the car getting onto a highway? You're getting onto the highway and you'll drive at 50 miles an hour, unless you want to take the risk of getting a ticket, which, uh, which I don't anymore. Um, you, your car will probably continue at, at the speed that is mandated. You know, that's that topping out of acceleration, of acceleration gains. And then the thing that will happen next is you'll slow down, right? If you are getting off at your exit or so you won't, if you are not increasing at this speed forever, you'll, you will uh, join the highway, your car will top out and then eventually you'll get off. And to get off, you'll have to slow down. So when we- Go I ahead. just realized that this example is really illustrative of how my mother merges onto an interstate at 48 or 50 miles an hour. I think New Yorkers actually uh, enter the freeway at about 80 and then get up to about 95 when, uh, when well, we reach. We, we don't want to incriminate anybody, of course. <laughs> but, but yeah, <laughs> my but, mom so you, merges at 48 miles an hour. Go ahead, go ahead. You can see that the car is still getting faster, though, as it goes. Even your mom, she's getting faster. Up Correct. to that 50, Fast but she's lady. not getting as faster as quickly, right? So Correct. that suggests that the car is reaching a speed limit. And the most likely thing that'll happen next is that you'll slow down to take an exit. Um, and so yeah. that's sort of the way we I try to try to explain it to people. Um, and if we move on from here, everybody looks at momentum. Um, I think you know when we used to to run uh, studies or when we used to research the most widely used indicators on the charts after the moving averages, you're looking at something like RSI so heavily utilized by the industry. And so you will want to use momentum. They give you valuable information about price uh, action. Uh, we can look for areas of extreme price swings. Has price moved really quickly in one direction? And can we bet on some kind of mean reversion? We can also use oscillators in trend, and we'll talk about that a little bit more on the next couple of slides. But even here, now we've removed the trend concepts and we've just added uh, some some momentum indicators and you know you can argue look there's no sense in having too many of the same indicator on your chart but we do we like to look at what we like to look at and you know the chart uh, that I see all the time will have multiple momentum indicators RSI stochastics um, DMI um, mm -hmm. you know Williams percentile PPO um, the, you know, the, the list is endless and people have, uh, they like to see that confirmation and that leads to confirmation bias. You can always prove your own point, uh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So this is the kind of chart you end up with momentum. If we move on from this, uh, the goal was then to create something similar in terms of idea and concept as the go-no-go -no -go trend to take the most uh, robust and used and sort of tried and true and tested momentum indicators and combine them and blend them into one oscillator that gives us a complete view of momentum. Um, and the, the reason for this complete overview of technical analysis was fairly selfish on my part so that I could go and talk to somebody, whether they were an oil trader, whether they were a rates trader, whether they were an FX, whether they were a uh, intraday trader for a PM, whether they were a long only fund manager. And, and to be able to create one chart that gave an overview of the technical picture was really, really important for me. So if we were to quickly walk through this, it will work just like a traditional oscillator. We can identify extremes of overbought and oversold and highlight those on the chart. Those will line up with peaks and troughs. We can identify divergence, an incredibly important topic in technical analysis. Um, higher highs on the chart, lower highs on the, on the oscillator. A little bit later, lower highs on the chart and higher lows on the oscillator. So divergence becomes easy to identify. And then the missing piece that we've talked about already, but volume, volume being uh, a confirmatory indicator that adds some weight to your opinion, we wanted to include volume. And so that's incorporated on the complete go, no go chart by this ribbon that runs along the bottom. And when that ribbon, uh, 
jumps out with the dark blue, that's telling us that volume is heavier than it ha than its average, heavier than it has been in the recent past. So we'll look for okay, is the is the trend changing color? Is the oscillator above or below that zero line? Is it overbought or oversold? And is volume, uh, you know, confirming what we're seeing in the price action? But we want to move on and just talk about one other piece to the oscillator that we think is really, really important. And that's the the zero line on the oscillator. <clears throat> so I got fascinated uh, early on in my learning of technical analysis with the idea of using momentum in trend. You've probably all learned about uh, momentum oscillators and how they're designed for use in sideways markets to identify peaks and troughs as a mean reversion uh, tool. But there's so much value in these oscillators that there was also a lot of research done to see how we can best use them while in trend. The works of people like Connie Brown wrote, uh, wrote some great literature on this idea. And what was found was that momentum oscillators will, will range when in trend. So if you're looking at something, you might see that an RSI or something like that will, tr will move from overbought to neutral, overbought to neutral. Now that makes all the sense in the world because in a good, healthy, strong uptrend, you will expect to see excessive buying, enthusiasm in the stock. And that will push an oscillator into overbought territory. Now, would you want to sell that stock in a strong uptrend just because the oscillator goes into neutral territory? You know, not necessarily, right? Especially if you're not just trying to scalp a short term trade. Mm -hmm. But we also know that when this trend is strong, the oscillator shouldn't go to oversold. Oversold would suggest excessive heavy selling, which doesn't make sense in a strong uptrend. Now, you can try to, uh, you know, find those levels yourself. And it's been argued that RSI will range from 40 to 80 but I've known FX traders that like to widen out those ranges a little bit. Um, and you also then become uh, sort of wrapped up in the problems of subjectivity. If, a, if RSI comes down to 41, 42, do we consider that a test of support? Or if RSI comes down to 37, 38, does that count as a break of support, a breakdown of the trend conditions? It's very subjective because these oscillators are very choppy. And I use RSI just as an example because it's probably the most well-known. So what we wanted to do here um, is create an oscillator that's calculated in a way where the if the inputs, and again, there's short-term momentum, there's multiple indicators, there's sensitivity uh, measures in here. If all of the inputs to our oscillator are in neutral territory, then it will fall to the zero line if in a go trend or rise to the zero line if in a no-go trend. So then we're left with an objective level of support and resistance, which is unusual, I think, and something that we haven't seen much in momentum analysis. So this is something that we really, really like, and we try to uh, try to uh, to show to people, uh, and that allows us to go back to what Tyler was talking about, which is the importance of staying in a trend. Um, and so, with this zero line, uh, we have an objective level that can be that can be really looked at in conjunction with the trend. So if we could just recap for everybody who's on the line we've got our trend identified right here a fresh go right we were in in bearish territory we went through a couple of neutral bars we entered a go trend and that happened after uh gonna go oscillator broke above the zero line we saw overbought conditions that's what was re required a, a uh, prevalence of buyers over sellers increases in demand for fixed supply that then drives price up so our oscillator is, is above zero, retest zero, and find support at neutral. Comes positive again, find support. Positive all the way to overbought, retreats back to neutral, back to the zero line. Again, find support, back into positive territory. Again, support. And throughout the trend, we see this acceleration of buying and then a digestion of the gains, and an acceleration of buying and the digestion of the gains. That's what a healthy trend looks like in any security. And for most investors, that's a, that's a troubling ride. Institutional folks might zoom out to uh, longer term time frames to avoid some of the, the heartache that goes along uh, with this roller coaster. But for everybody on the line, including our institutional investors, what's happening when momentum comes back to zero is that we identify objectively 
where there's a buy the dip moment, right? When we see momentum come back in the direction of the trend, uh, we, we know we're, we're set to continue. And so finding an opportunity to scale up your position, right? At each point that momentum comes back to test neutral, that's a chance to, to add to your position at uh, a periodic low within the trend um, and to really just stick with it, to be a patient investor and let that uh, profitable trade become a really, really profitable trade. Outsized gains is what we're looking for. And that's that's the trick for any trend following. It's how do you know whether it's a buy the dip moment or if it's going to be something uh, more substantive and we're rolling over. Go no go charts help you identify quickly and easily in an elegant, simple, color-coded manner, whether or not we're still in trend. And let's just take it one step further. Alex and I have uh, done a lot of work just on data visualization, uh, the need to simplify things for, for the human mind, and visuals are in, important cues. So every time that momentum comes back to test the zero line, we're gonna throw an icon up there for trend continuation. So this is sort of a low risk or high probability area that the trend is gonna continue because momentum has come back in the direction of the trend. That's these little green circles that appear right under the price bars. But like any other momentum oscillator, we also wanna identify those areas of overbought. And overbought in and of itself, that's not a bad thing. We don't sell as soon as it gets to overbought. Uh, but we do want to take note of the fact that uh, momentum is not going to stay overbought forever. Securities don't trade in a perfectly uh, straight line or, uh, or or we'd be in trouble. So the counter trend correction arrows are there to let us know that you know that's not a that's not the spot to add to your position or to get involved in this trend for the first time. That's an area where it's likely that price will consolidate some of those gains, where we'll see a counter trend correction. Um, so for those who are thinking about how they might use this in their own trading strategy, go to go charts is not a uh, one type of trading strategy. It's a set of tools that anybody can use on any time frame across any asset class with their own sort of risk parameters. I can't tell you what uh, what you'd be comfortable with or whether you know taking profits in uh, this Apple uh, holding in your portfolio makes sense right here. Maybe you need to take profits. Maybe uh, somebody just went to the hospital or somebody just went to college and it's time to exit the position. You want to do it at a time where you're at a maximum level of overbought and, and price is, uh, is right up at its peaks. That's what those icons are there for you and you can use them in any way that, uh, that works with your trading strategy. All right, we've covered go, no, go trend. We've covered go, no, go oscillator. The importance of the zero line. Uh, we've looked at the icons. Let's dig into a volatility signal here with the go, no, go squeeze, Alex. Yeah, so the last piece when I was trying to, to to figure out as an individual what I really needed to give me a complete overview, volatility was that piece that was still left out there. So um, if you're familiar with volatility squeezes, things like the Keltner band squeeze or Bollinger bands, you'll understand that we are often going to look for a situation where volatility has been reduced. Um, when I was learning this, we used to be told or we used to talk about squeezing a tube of toothpaste and you can squeeze that toothpaste but if you keep squeezing eventually that top will blow off and so as the, that that band squeezes price at the volatility is being reduced then when it does break out of that squeeze we can expect to move it which could be significant in the direction of the break so to continue to keep this in one chart that gives us everything we need from a technical perspective what we try to visually identify are moments when the go no go oscillator rides the zero line so what that's telling us is that the momentum inputs are staying in neutral territory for bar after bar after bar after bar we're not seeing overbought we're not seeing oversold on any of the inputs that we used to blend to that oscillator and so what we've done is we use a climbing grid called the go no go squeeze to climb for every bar that the oscillator remains at the zero line and then it stays at a max while well, that's the case and we can look then for a break of the squeeze uh, and hopefully for a significant move in the direction of the break now when we are in trend so in this example here we were in a no-go trend the oscillator was finding resistance at zero as we'd expect if that no-go trend was healthy but then it came back up to the zero line and it stayed there as price really consolidated movements became smaller we really went sideways 
Now we expect at that point, all else being equal, that it should get rejected by the zero line, roll over, we'd be given a no-go trend continuation icon and price might make a new leg down. But that didn't happen, right? The squeeze was broken to the upside into positive territory and that's a leading indicator that the no-go trend is threatened. We then see an amber go fish bar and then the go trend then is confirmed a couple of bars later. And so now we then would be looking for um, supported the zero line with the go trend being in place. So that's the go, no, go squeeze um, designed to just highlight those situations for, for users. And like, like every element of technical analysis, what we're trying to do is understand the behavior of market participants. And what a beautiful visual display you came up with here, Alex, to show that tug of war, the, the knife fight between buyers and sellers right at this price level. There's no, there's no direction to the momentum oscillator. Even though we're seeing heavy volume, there's a lot of buying and selling happening right in here as price narrows within that tight, tight range. And then of course, as Alex said, some of these are leading indicators. So a break out of a max squeeze to the upside, not a return in the direction of the, the uh, underlying or the prior trend uh, tells us that we're, we're in, uh, in store for a big reversal. Um, so that's how the, the tools are going to work together. That's how you can use the full suite of go -No go charts. And uh, now we're, what we're going to do is look at a, a few examples uh, from the markets uh, just recently. And again, we've talked about trend, momentum, volatility, and volume. But there's only three things that you have to ask yourself when you look at a go -No go chart. Where, where is the color of the trend right now? What's happening with the oscillator of a bought or oversold? And then anything interesting going on with the zero line. So let's do a few examples together. Right now, we're going to look at the U.S. financial sector ETF. Uh, you feel free to throw this in the chat or the question box, or uh, you can just say it to yourself at home. Uh, where's the trend, Alex? First question, trend is a strong go. We're seeing bright blue bars. Brilliant. Where's our oscillator at? Oscillator in positive territory. It looks like it's a four. So it's not at its extremes of overbought, but in momentum is in the direction of the go trend. Absolutely. And then anything happening with the zero line? Uh, we would look back and say that we recently broke above it and rallied off that zero line. But right now we are in positive territory, nothing to report. Not yet overbought on heavy volume. Now, for those of you who, uh, who really need the fundamental explanation behind what's going on in your charts, uh, rising rate environment, steepening yield curve. This is great for the profitability of uh, lending institutions, aka banks. Uh, so U.S. financial sector ETF has, uh, has really caught the bid here in 2022 as we're all uh, seeing the inflation worries and, uh, and watching a, a potentially hawkish Fed. All right, let's do another one. Yeah, this, yeah. Is a, this is an interesting one because we have seen the rotation into financials. So we can look at a major player such as Goldman. And again, where, where's the trend? The trend is a week ago, it's aqua. So the trend was identified, but it's a week ago than we saw on the financial sector XLF. Uh, where's the oscillator? Well, the oscillator is at zero. Mm -hmm. And then the third question to ask yourself is what is happening around that zero that we need to be aware of? Well, it's testing that zero line from above. Now we would expect, or we would look to see if the oscillator finds support now at zero. You can see how during that correction, it was finding resistance at zero. It's now broken above zero. The trend is in place and we're looking to see if we find support. If the oscillator does find support, bounces back into zero, into positive territory, what will we see? We'll see a go trend continue, continuation icon, which will uh, suggest a relatively low risk opportunity to participate in, in the trend. Now, we are uh, realistic. <laughs> You've got demands at home, demands at the office. Uh, for, for many of us, uh, just trading the markets is not what we can do 10 hours a day. Um, so the team at Metastock, fantastic group of individuals. You can always call them up, uh, get some questions answered. But I'm going to take it even a step further and be with you in every single chart, anytime you've got questions. Alex, mm -hmm. tell us a little yeah. bit about the expert commentaries that come exclusively yeah. with Metastock. This is super exciting for me because it's like we we're almost able to just give you our two cents um, on every chart you might be looking at. So we just talked about how hopefully simple um, it can be answering those questions. And that's how I do it when I go to talk to somebody. I pull up the charts that I'm going to need to talk about. 
I give myself an overview of the technical conditions very quickly. And the expert commentary that we put together with Metastock hopefully does that for, for you for any security. So uh, there'll be a lot of explanation towards the bottom of how, um, how we've, this has all come about and explanation of the different tools. But that interpretation section at the top, it will run you through the complete overview. What's the trend? Where's the oscillator? Are there any icons on the current bar? And is there anything happening in terms of volatility? And so you can get that complete overview in that interpretation paragraph. And the other thing that's important to note, I think, because it's super valuable, is this can be an educational tool because you can go to any bar on this chart and open up the expert commentary and get this interpretation. So you could go to a bar that has an icon and it'll tell you what that means. And so I was very excited about the, the expert commentary piece because I think it adds a lot of value. And then, of course, uh, the explorations. Absolutely. Really unique tools that uh, the Metastock team has built. Uh, and here, as we come into the last uh, five minutes or so of tonight's presentation, um, it's great to have a really uh, complete technical picture to be able to trade any security. But my goodness, uh, if you wanted to look across the, the Russell 3000 and find uh, anything that has the, the go trend, we're breaking out of a squeeze. Um, that's a lot of charts to thumb through one at a time if you're going through all 3,000. Uh, so Alex, talk to us about the screening capabilities within Metastock. Yeah, again, another another fantastic bit of work from, from the team. And they're called explorations in Metastock. Obviously, everybody knows that. But the ability to find securities that are meeting the go-no-go -no -go criteria is really exciting for us. And so there are three uh, current uh, explorations. We can search for icons. We can search for... Uh, securities in a squeeze, and we can search for goes, uh, no goes, new goes, and no goes, or current state of trend. Um, you might, you know, from a breadth perspective, we work with a lot of institutions that want to know uh, in terms of market health and the, the combined or the blended go no go trend indicator to find out, for example, that 400 securities out of the SP 500 are currently in a go trend can give you real insight into overall market health. So to be able to screen for these and then open the charts right there, save them as a list, open them in the quote center, uh, just to be able to run the, the, the explorations on the go-no-go -no -go criteria is, is, is something that uh, I'm very excited about. Absolutely. Now, uh, Jeff, Kelly, uh, we, we've probably got another uh, 200 examples uh, from recent research and what we're seeing in the markets. Uh, but maybe this is the right spot to pause as we're approaching uh, seven o'clock Eastern and just say that, you know, Alex has been developing these uh, meticulously for for years. Uh, and really the, the input that the two of us have had from the institutional community about how they think about a top down technical approach, how they think about uh, asset management and, and identifying and sticking with trends, being patient investors and trying to remove emotion. Uh, that's that was the uh, the genesis of these tools. That's the reason that we uh, put all the time and work into building uh, this new company. And thankfully, uh, here we are, January 2022. We can bring this to uh, to individual and self-directed investors and traders uh, to put the same tools to work in their uh, in their toolkit. Thanks to the good folks at Metastock. Um, I will also just kind of add that uh, the name Go No Go. Uh, when uh, when Alex was first uh, working on this, it, it's borrowed from you know NASA and, and some military uh, operations where you have uh, just a simple pass fail condition for whether or not you're going to proceed with the next step. So when you're thinking about allocating your own capital or if you're if you're investing on behalf of clients and family members, um, it's a, there's a lot of risk involved inherently in all markets and all time frames. Uh, and so taking a really uh, careful approach to understand the total conditions, understand trend from a lot of different perspectives, have all of the information of a lot of indicators right there at your fingertips, but then to distill it down, to simplify your process into a simple go or no go uh, was really what, what we found to be the key to long-term profitability and being able to have a repeatable disciplined process. Um, so. If everybody's still on the line, we can do more examples. We can keep going through these slides, or we can also open it up to, to questions if uh, if there are any at this point. Yeah, we have a question. And I want to thank you guys for inspiring me to grow a beard. <laughs> you got to have a beard to join the band. <laughs> um, so Lewis wanted to know, do you, are you, if we could look at Amazon, 
And um, I've actually got it pulled up. I could share my screen real quick. Oh, uh, um, and we, and I just, I think that would be a really good way to show how easy this is to actually read. So yeah. let me go ahead and jump over. Do you guys mind? Not no, at all, all, please. Okay. So I'm gonna make myself the presenter here and I will share my screen. And uh, let's see. <laughs> It's simple, but it's not easy, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Well, it, it would help if I could get the screen share. Oh, here it is. Okay, there it is. Show my screen, and you should see a beautiful meta stock chart. Let me know when you guys can see that. Very yep. nice. Okay, right here. You can see it. Yep. Okay. So this is just a chart of Amazon, and uh, maybe I should read it, and then you guys can tell me if I'm correct. Perfect. So. What we're seeing here in Amazon right now, I'm going to say, in terms of a trend perspective, is a weak no-go. This means the trend is weak, but it's painting weaker uh, pink bars. Sound good? I think I see a, <laughs> a dark purple bar on the last one, but uh, that could just be a, a sink. Oh, you're right. You're right. I didn't go all the way over. No, that's not bad. Let me go ahead there and click all the way over. Yeah. So this is actually a strong no-go. The trend strong. is strong with go, no go, and unique blend of inputs combining to pick dark purple bars. So the trend you would call very bearish right here. Is that right? Correct. OK. And then with the oscillator, the oscillator is at 0, where we will watch to see if it finds resistance. So we did recently had this pullback. It's returned to 0. We'll see if that's a resistance area going forward. Uh, correct? Yep. Correct. All right. Uh, the no, no, there's no icons on the current bar. The last one we had was right about here, uh, the continuation icon. And then uh, we currently don't have a squeeze. If we had a squeeze, we'd have kind of this escalating yep. orange bar. How easy is that? <laughs> what <are> the... <laughs> Am I an expert? Am I hired? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. only, if, only if the beard grows in a bit. Oh, yeah. pretty well. This is as good <laughs> as it gets. And right here on Amazon, you're looking at a daily chart, correct? Uh, this is a daily chart, correct? That's yes. a daily. So, yeah. Uh, depending on what time frame you're trading, right? You could you could zoom out to see what the uh, underlying bias is for for something like Amazon on a weekly basis, um, or you could drill down into an hourly chart. But yeah, let's take a look at the weekly real quick. Yeah, and Brian wants to know, um, and we should cover this again. What the blue ribbon at the bottom of the chart is, and uh, uh, I'll let you answer that, Alex, although I think I could. Yeah, the, the blue ribbon just will give you a sense of whether volume is particularly heavy or not. So when it becomes blue, it's heavier than its average, its, its uh, short-term average, historical average. So it gives you a sense of um, whether or not volume is confirming anything you're seeing in terms of price action. And then, I don't know, if Jeff, if you want to take the weekly chart, if you want me to, 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 uh, yeah. to walk yeah, through this was... as well. I just wanted to prove I was paying attention. It's your turn. Absolutely. I'll let you talk about the weekly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is this is interesting because um, the weekly now is is showing us that the trend has actually changed on the longer time frame, and we're seeing a no go uh, on the weekly. So over the last several weeks, we're seeing a no go. Um, so if we were to go back to that daily, Jeff, um, mm -hmm. okay, we, sure. we can we can look now and say, okay, the weekly has become a no-go uh, a no go trend. So I will be looking now at this zero line to see if we find resistance there and if we get a low risk opportunity to enter into that. And we might have already taken a, 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 an entry and those last no-go continuation icons, those red circles, mm -hmm. because that right looks here. like it will have fallen in the last three weeks where the weekly had already turned to a, to a no-go trend. And then you could even go, like Tyler said, down into a 60 minute to try to get you know, an even better entry than on the daily. And now you'd be looking at no go uh, conditions being met to it, now that you're lining up with the weekly. Just for clarification, you're talking about an entry into a short trade, right? Correct. We're shorting Amazon right. and yeah, the sorry. entry into the trend. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Adding to a short position. Um, yeah. Jeff, the only thing I would point out is uh, on yesterday's bar, you see that green arrow? Right on, here, uh, yes. Yep, mm -hmm. the green arrow on yesterday's bar appeared when momentum left extreme oversold. So what, mm -hmm. that, what that green arrow tells us is that you had some buying momentum. It was extremely oversold, and it's coming back to zero. That's like a, a counter trend correction. We expect uh, some price gains within that bearish trend 
because momentum was coming back to zero. I think for, for Alex and I at this point, you'd look to see uh, the go -no go oscillator be rejected at zero, and then you're continuing that that bearish trade or that short trade in Amazon. Yeah. There you and have the group. Uh, just to illustrate that, I've actually backed the commentary up one day, and mm -hmm. here it is. It's the green arrow, no go counter trend correction is possible, and the short term price uh, may struggle to go lower. I just uh, I, I, I love how well this is defined, and it's like having Alex right here to help me understand what's going on, or yeah. or Tyler, one of the two. <laughs> I'll take you both. You guys are fun. Um, Robert wants to know: Do you guys have an example of futures contracts like the intraday? Does this work with like thirty minutes and four hour charts? Uh, yeah, we don't we don't have an example on this presentation, but yes, we have um, we have clients that are that are actually trading you know one minute charts on the e minis or um, like like Tyler hinted at during the presentation. Uh, uh, we believe that a good technical indicator will work on any asset class on any periodicity. So uh, we don't have an example in here, but yes, you could pull this up on on any futures contract uh, just like you would uh, on any periodicity that you that you might like. Okay. Uh, in YouTube, Paul wants to know, um, have you tried using this system intraday with Apple? If so, do you have recommended timeframes? And I can switch to Apple if you'd like to look at a couple of examples uh, pretty easily, actually. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull it up. Um, you know, Apple I don't... is a great example because it's, you know, mega cap stock just past the three trillion mark. Uh, you've got a ton of liquidity. Um, so you could trade, uh, you know, intraday with, with uh, plenty of liquidity on your side. Um, the idea of capturing trends, right? So, so if you're a mutual fund manager moving billions of dollars around, you might be looking at months to years on your trade. If, mm -hmm. if you've got a, a small enough position, then trading one minute charts, no problem. And the same concepts apply. You want to get in when the go is identified. Uh, you want to stick with it, uh, it in those fluctuations, watching the gonna go oscillator to confirm that momentum's coming back in your direction. Uh, so here we're looking at Apple on a one minute chart. Uh, hourly, actually. Hourly. hourly. Yeah, and, and that's just something to, from a, from a, a textbook or theoretical perspective um, a lot of a lot of the teachings will talk about using a ratio sort of a multiple of roughly five to step up and down in terms of, of trends so if you were let's say using the daily as your primary uh, trading chart you might look go up to the weekly for your market bias your overall market bias and then down to the hourly um, to get uh, you know a sort of a, a better entry um, people wouldn't not as often recommended to say use a daily and then go to a one minute. So if you were looking at something like a five minute chart, then you might, uh, you know, step through a 30 minute as your medium term and then a two hour, you know, however you calculate. But that, that's sort of the the fractal nature of the trends and the, the fractal, fractal nature of technical analysis is really mostly recommended to go in those kinds of steps yeah. down. Yeah. But um, yeah, so like right now, just in this case, you've shown the weekly trend is a go, the daily trend uh, is a go, the daily trend looks like it might have found some support at prior lows. From what I remember, you could easily draw a horizontal uh, level of support on there because uh, price remains the focus. You have that that only price image. Um, so you, you could be looking at, yeah, exactly, on the weekly chart, mm -hmm. that's what you'd see in terms of support. And so you might be now saying, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a go on the weekly, I'm a go on the daily, let me go down to the hourly and maybe that's your go entry point um, that we just saw a few hours ago. And now, or even now, or even you wait now to see if it bounces off the zero line and you get a uh, go trend continuation. Um, but yeah, of, intraday on Apple, intraday on, on any, any security should, uh, should be able to follow the process in the same way. All right. I don't see a lot of other questions that are coming in. So um, should we talk about how we can get it? Oh, and if you guys just have questions, let us know. So yes. let me go ahead and jump into the sides here real quick, unless you guys want to do the yeah, presentation no. some more. Okay. No, right, I, think, I think this is great, Jeff. Thank you. We were able to um, actually, okay, here we go. Um, let me go ahead and start from here. Okay. All right. All right. So there's your guys' picture. You're welcome. <laughs> so, just Man, to kind of recap. <laughs> yeah. Is that your high school photo right there? That that's exactly right. I'm actually only 26, Jeff. I just got a lot of city miles on this engine. 
so go no go trend you've got like the trend uh the oscillator the icons and the squeeze and that fits together i just love the picture that it paints i think it does a really really good job with it um, one of the things when we initially showed this back in November, the development version, um, our, even our marketing guy was blown away with how well things actually looked on the chart. And so I've been really, really anxious and I'm excited to get this live. Um, with that, you're also going to get the um, uh, the expert advisor, which is going to give you those instant setup alerts with exact entry prices. You'll get buy and sell trigger alerts. You'll get updated stop loss values and crystal clear exits, uh, as well as the explorations. And that's really does a pretty good job of actually kind of allowing you as a user to go in and say, okay, well, what is actually going on with this? What's the trend doing? What's the oscillator doing? What's the icons doing? And kind of paint a clear picture for you. Uh, and one of the things I love about this is how easy the scans are defined. So I can run the icon scan, the squeeze scan, and the trend scan, and it's going to be able to, uh, it's going to be able to go in and just show me exactly what the trend exists. I can run it against any market that I'm interested in, and it's going to paint those out well for me. It's going to give you the trend identification re readings, what the oscillator is doing, whether there's a squeeze, any of the icons, and it's all very very well painted for you so as part of that we're doing the go no go trend the go no go com uh, complete is a one-time cost of 1495 1495 uh, what we're going to do here at the webinar is we're going to give you a one-time price of 995 we're going to back it with a money back guarantee so you can try it for 30 days if you like it if it works well for you you can keep it um, otherwise you can return it for a refund uh, you can give us a call 800 882-3040. Uh, you can also chat online with us. We've got reps here that are uh, willing to answer any questions that you've got. Metastock.com slash sales chat. You can also visit us online at metastock.com slash go no go a. So there you go. Take advantage of it. Take a look at it. It's a very, very cool new add-on. Uh, play with it. See if you like it. It's going to be something that you really, really like. Neil wants to know if there's an instruction manual that comes with it. And there is, absolutely. So as part of the package, we've put together a, an instruction manual that shows you how to run the explorations, how to attach the expert advisors, how to do all of that stuff. So it comes with it as part of the installation package. So thank you for that question as well. And that's really all I've got, Tyler, Alex. Fantastic. Any... <laughs> okay, let's yep. see. Um, give it a go, guys. Uh, yeah. Metastock.com slash go no go a or metastock.com slash sales chat, or 800-882-3040. All right. With that being said, I want to say thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you, Tyler. Alex, I appreciate you guys jumping in today. If you have, uh, uh, and for everybody that's in the audience, thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Stay safe. Stay healthy. <laughs> thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks right. for having us, Jeff. We'll see you again really see soon. See you guys all at the next one. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Good night. All right.